everyone, this is Remlays from 40k Theories, and welcome to this newest episode of Adeptus Podcasters. Joining me as always is Michael from Tactica Imperialis. Uh, hello everyone. And our guest this week, an artist in the 40k community whose work you may have well seen on If the Emperor Had a Text to Speech device. Joining us this week is Adeptus Adamaris. Hello, pleasure to meet you. Or talk to you guys, yeah. So... How is everyone doing this week? Aside from the internet connection issues we already are experiencing this early on in the bloody program. <laughs> yeah, I'm not too bad, thanks. I'm at the end of my Easter holiday, so I'm two to three weeks out from exams. So I'll let you decide how I'm feeling right now. Yeah, that that's a, that's a big mood, because I'm also having finals pretty soon, just next week. Ouch. Yeah, I'm prepared. I just don't want to do them. <laughs> well, I'm graduating in a month and a half, so well, well, two months. I'm graduating, awesome. so yeah, high five because like I'm graduating too. So hooray, graduation yeah. buddies! Indeed, excellent. And uh, let's see what happens after that. Yeah, and then there's me crossed. being the old fire who's not doing all this at all. Exactly. <laughs> Hey, at least you don't have to deal with all the stupid nonsense of applying to jobs and stuff. I mean, you've already heard me complain about it. <laughs> no, I just have to deal with, you know, speaking with the guys in charge of the mortgage and stuff like that. Ah, <laughs> oh, that's true. We'll, yes. we'll be there soon. You'll be there soon. Yep. <laughs> so, in the news this week, uh, slash, slash, slash. Lots of slanesh. Yeah, there are a couple of little extra things, but the headline is, well, it's literally taken over the Warhammer community website. It's Slanesh. Uh, so Battle Tome, Head of Knights of Slanesh, uh, which we already sort of knew was coming, is right around the corner, as is the new Keeper of Secrets, the new Endless Spells, the Terrain Piece, which we've now been given the name, the Fane of Slanesh, and I think the Mask and Silesk are also this week, uh, as well as that new Mirror War Machine, whose name I've forgotten off the top of my head. It's Derek. It's not. It should What's it be. called? I just remind myself what it's actually called. Um, so all of the new units will be getting new rules for AOS and 40k. So the new key receivers will be getting a nice big booster. Um, and there is a new named character as well. Uh, Shalaxi Hellbane, aka Slanesh's Demon Hunter. Um, and it's... Oh, the Contorted Epitome. That's the name of the Mirror War Machine thingy McJib. Do you know what I'm surprised about? We've got a named Keeper of Secrets, yet it's not Nakari. Probably for the sake of ease of writing, in that Nakari hasn't been around for ages. Like, I'd love to have seen Nakari, um, but I think it's almost easier for them at this point to introduce a new character, sort of like how they did with Rotigus instead of doing Kugath. I suppose. Well, it's that and having variety, like a new character means new lore, new interesting stories and that kind of thing. Yeah, absolutely. I think particularly with um, Nurgle, um, Kugath isn't a thing or wasn't a thing in fantasy, to my knowledge. I'm sure, Graham, you played fantasy long enough to remind me that I'm wrong. Um, but he wasn't I didn't play with demons in fantasy, so I couldn't tell you. I played Lizardmen back in fantasy. Somebody had to, I guess. I played Blood Bowl, does that count? Yes. <laughs> it didn't have greater demons, but it counts. Uh, but yeah, I don't think Kugath was in fantasy, to my knowledge. Uh, so they needed to put someone new in. And Nikari has not never been in the rules for fantasy. He's just been in... I think he was like vaguely involved with Tyrion, Teclas, and Alariel. That was it. And I don't remember him doing anything in 40k, though I'm sure you'll tell me I'm wrong again. Uh, Nikari is probably best known in 40k for... being Fulgrim's consort. A.K.A. when he took the form of Fat Grim. <laughs> and now you understand why they wanted someone new. That and it just makes sense that they're trying to make the army more versatile for both, like, 40k and fantasy, so it's kind of hard to have, like, a named character that's only one universe that's relevant very much to a Primarch, which isn't really in fantasy, so... Yeah, absolutely. Um, so in terms of help... Sorry. I was just say this does deny us you know, having a fat Fulgrim model, which I'm very sad about. <laughs> I'm kind of happy with that. Um, so Hellbane... 
I was going to say, is this a head desk moment this early in the show? Probably not, no. <laughs> Given the episode number, there'll probably be several. Um, I'm worried about what's going to happen given what episode Oh, yes, is. because this is episode 69, a.k.a. the Ian Watson special. No, it's not, but is it? We don't know. Maybe later on. Who knows? Please, by the towel, I know. <laughs> so, yeah. So when... Sorry, go on. I was just going to say, when uh, Fat Fulgrim comes onto the stage, do they just say, oh, loudy coming? <laughs> He's a heckin' chonker. <laughs> Anyway, so, so shall I see how- a tuba. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like a dubstep version, because there's Noise Marine playing it. Oh, knocks on over. I'd be like, if you ever played Mass Effect 2, that like trumpet that's constantly in your ear <laughs> every time that you find something. I haven't played it, but I've heard some of the soundtrack for Mass Effect 2, so I know sort of what you're on about. It's, it's memorable. I mean, it has got so- one of the... I mean, my opinion, like, Suicide Mission is one of the best pieces of video game music I've ever heard. Personally. But that could just be because I'm a bit of an eclectic for music and I really like things in an odd time signature. And that thing's in, like, 7-4 or 7-8. So I kind of like it for some odd reason. No, that... Oh, I didn't even know that because that's interesting. I played the game, but I didn't even notice that. Like, you should, like, kind but of... yeah, a- if you count... It's, it's, it's really quite... Subtle. I didn't hear it for the longest time. If you actually count the beat... Bam, bam, bam. And it, it, anyway, I won't do it for the sake of brevity, but it's actually seven, eight. It's in. It's a really weird time signature that really throws you off if you're trying to walk to it because it doesn't have a steady rhythm. It's like, oh, that's annoying. But anyway, um, so Shalaxi Hellbent. Uh, this is basically Slanesh's um, bloodthirster killer. That's what they do. I'd like to see him try and take on Scarbrand. I mean, the artwork that's on the article of law has him pretty much, or him, her, it, does it, does it give it? They. Uh, in this case, I think it is they. Uh, but it's basically just taking a bloodthirster to town. It's annihilating this bloodthirster. So this thing can pack a punch. And um, its rules are quite interesting as well, though. I'm sure someone more competent than me could give you a better idea. Uh, the other big demon is Silesk, which is a real clever bit of lore, actually. So it's a Slaneshi herald who got two attached to mortals, um, then sort of cultivated a mortal champion uh, as a patron, and then as sort of punishment, or as a tag team, they were put together, cut their way through to Slanesh itself, and then fight together forever because Slanesh does that sort of thing. Well, I mean, that's the definition of chaos. It's just crazy things happen and then you have to deal with them, I guess. Yeah, I've told that very badly, but it's just reading the lore article is quite interesting. As my internet died? No, nope, I can hear you. <laughs> Sorry, I just, I just noticed the long quiet and I thought my internet died. <laughs> Never mind. It's, the, it's the ominous silence of, oh no, do we have to start over? No, no, we're not starting over again, because if we do, Ian Watson will come and sneak up behind us. Stop it. Oh yeah, to the to the person in the comments who commented in the last episode, like, what that's all about, it's kind of a running joke at this point. Um, it, Blame it, Alpha for this, it's his fault. He was the one who exposed the world to the depravity that is Inquisitor. But you keep Draco. bringing it up when you could not bring it up, but you choose to bring it up nearly every flipping episode. <laughs> Because <laughs> it's a trope. It needs to be done like with Ferris Malice eating sand or catching a las cannon beam with his hands. It needs to be repeated. No, it doesn't. <laughs> oh, are you talking about that book where the guy's like really he wrote like really creepy things? Is that Yes, like it. the scene with the um the demon at sex scene where he Stop where it. he uses his tail to <laughs> basically Right up the guy's... Yeah, okay. Yeah. And kills him that yeah, way. Yeah, that. Okay. Because I was like... I know this is the Sinesh segment, but stop <laughs> it. But there's a reason why Garrett in the TTS crew calls him the sex goblin. <laughs> that, it, that it, Yeah, okay. Because I was like, yeah, Watson? Like, like from Sherlock? What? I'm, what? <laughs> That's John Watson. <laughs> All I remembered was the Watson, Okay. Fair. Though he did write the screenplay for iRobot, I think it was. Really? 
I think so. He he did write a screenplay for a movie to do with robots. It was either it was either iRobot or AI. It's one of the two. So it was a robot one. I know that. I do, oh. yeah, I don't remember. But I mean, if it's that guy, it probably is whichever one has the most lewd stuff. <laughs> most likely. Dear oh dear. Um. So in terms of what else is going on with Slanesh, honestly, yeah, the only thing yeah, I- it was AI. Yeah, it was AI. <laughs> so focusing on the topic at hand. <laughs> I'm trying. <laughs> The screenplay was by Steven Spielberg oh and Ian Watson. Oh, that's why Spielberg got roasted for it in the rap battle. Never mind. <laughs> that explains things. Yeah, random trivia. <laughs> so, anyway, um, in terms of what else is going on with Sinesh, you've got the new Endless Spells and their terrain piece. I don't know if these are going to end up in 40k. To be honest, I don't think the spells will. Uh, the terrain piece could. Um, which is... Well, it's an interesting one because it's it's kind of brutal. <laughs> Uh, no, not that one. It's the Mirror Endless spell that I find really weird. Um, I think. Yeah, so... Is that the one that keeps some, like, everybody has to walk closer to it or get, like... Yeah, it it is. Um, so if you start within 12 inches of this Endless spell, which can be set up and it flies around the board, then if you move further away from it than you started, you get hit with D3 Mortal Wounds. And that's, that's not bad as a start. And on top of that... If you have a hero within six inches, um, then um, you roll a uh, 6d6. Yeah, you do. Um, and for each six you get, you suffer a number of mortal wounds equal to the number of sixes. So you either suffer 1, 4, 9, 16, 25, or 36 mortal wounds. Oof. Oof. I mean, it could be a big oof. It could also be a... Oh, was that a gentle breeze? Yeah, I mean, you've got to be within six inches, so it's probably not that easy to set up, but it's just like the damage potential of that thing is probably enough that it might see play for five minutes because Predator and the spell see play for about five minutes and then never get played again as a rule of thumb, which is a shame, but hey. Uh, You've also got the Wheels of Excruciation. Try saying that five times fast. Um, That just deals with armor saves. You've got the Dreadful Visage, which is kind of I don't even really know or care and then a sacrificial altar because of course you do well you can sacrifice your relics to get re-rolls for some reason so you can spam all of them uh, like the seekers seeker chariots stuff like that uh, you probably can there is a faction of Slanesh called the god seekers who rely on going super fast they used to get like plus two move uh, to all models in the faction, but now they get, I think, plus one to charges and a bunch of other bonuses around depravity points, which is how they do summoning and all, all sorts of shenanigans. So you can absolutely do an all chariot army with Slanesh. It's probably not the most powerful, but you can do it. I am really interested in the kind of, um, the depravity points being introduced because at least I, I don't play Slanesh, I play Space Wolf, so, you know, I don't know a whole lot about. Like Slanesh specifically? Uh, this but... isn't a mechanic that's going to be in 40k, for the record. I'm oh. talking Sigma. Oh, it's Sigma. Okay. That's an- yeah, it's so fun, this though. Is... Oh, man. Yeah. So the way it works is in Sigma is when your hero takes a wound and doesn't die, or when your hero deals a wound that doesn't kill, then you get a point. And you spend those points to summon units. Um, that's the broad strokes of how it works. And there's a bunch of other ways in the new book to generate them. I don't believe that like chaos demons in uh 40k have any unique god specific summoning mechanics like corn's blood tithe points zinch's sorcery points and nurgle's corruption points i think that's right um so yeah all the different sigma demons have different methods of summoning um and they sort of just put them all together in 40k because otherwise you need four codices and people already complain about code exploit Mm, that's true. I don't know. It just sounds like it'd be interesting to kind of have like different, different unique mechanics per like chaos god. Just at least to, like in my perspective, I never found any of them interesting because they're just kind of all did the same thing in in my view. I know that's like really really basic because you know me me and the, the herder puppies, but I don't know. I thought it would be. I thought it was going to be a new interesting thing, but I guess I was wrong. <laughs> 
I mean, there'll be some new interesting things that come out of it. So I think, I don't know if the Keeper of Secrets is quite going to be able to offer buffs to your enemy heroes and then kill them for it, which is what the AOS Keeper of Secrets can do. Uh, it's an old ability it used to have, and they've changed it now. So what you do is you say to your opponent, would you like your hero to have a giant pile of rerolls and buffs? If your opponent says yes, then you can basically do them a massive amount of damage for it. I don't know why anyone would accept that, because that's such a sketchy question. <laughs> why would you... Your, unless you had some reason to give your enemy a bunch of bonuses, why would you just hand that over? So how it works is you pick an enemy hero that's within three inches of you and ask your opponent if you wish that hero to take the boost. If they say no, they get whacked with D3 mortal wounds. Oh, okay, so it's like a... <laughs> take this or else. If they say... If they say yes, they get plus one to hit for that combat phase, but at the start of the next combat phase, so a turn later, they die on a four up. Ah, uh, Straight okay. up. So it, it it seems like there's more of a... It's kind of a gambling chance with that to see who benefits yeah, absolutely. from it. It's, it's giving in to temptation. That's pretty much the entire idea. The Keeper, the Keeper of Secrets whispers in the champion's ear and sort of says... I could offer you so much. Psych, dead. Okay, I like it then. That's cool. It's like thematic. Yeah, and that's the beauty of what Sigma has done, is that all the gameplay mechanics, 90% of the time, feel really thematic. Some of them are broken, and that's what 40k hasn't done, is it sort of leaned into its balance over its narrative, whether you think it succeeded or not, it's up to you. Mm -hmm. But Sigma really leans into its narrative with its game mechanics, so like, the army I play, or my second, third AOS army, is the Eidnet Deepkin. You might have heard of them, the fish elves. Mm -hmm. um, and they have a mechanic where they basically come in like a tide. So at the start of the game, the tide is out, then it comes in and they get charge rolls up, and then the tide hits, and they all strike first. So they ignore the you go, I go combat system, and they all go first in that round. And then in the fourth round, the tide is going out, so they can retreat and still do stuff, which normally you're not allowed to do. It's like they all had fly in 40k, if you like. And that's sort of how their core mechanic works. Hmm. It is very but interesting. Yeah. It is, and I do sometimes feel sorry for 40k players that don't get to experience it, because it is not always balanced, but it is hella fun. And here I thought we were going to uh, talk about 40k stuff, and I'm learning about Age of Sigmar. <laughs> You yeah, know, I, it, 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 this is a 40k <laughs> podcast, but I'm here, and that means that there's always at least some Sigma that comes up, and there'll be more later because I've been actually had time to do some reading. That's anyway, cool. I realised that Bremlays has kind of died, so let's bring him back into the conversation. Hello. <laughs> Sorry, I do that a lot. Welcome My bad. Back. <laughs> yes. So, what else is there in the news that isn't AOS related, perchance? Sanguinius is going on made to order. Oh, yeah. So the Sanguinea Special Edition, like, sold out immediately. Uh, like, it outsold every other Primark in its opening weekend by two to one, according to GW. Oh, damn. Indeed. So because it sold out, they're going to do a made-to-order run of Special Edition Sanguinea to make sure that everyone who wants one gets one. In before someone comments Dang. saying, does it come with Borgar? Because someone's bound to make that comment. What? The burger comment? That... Oh, I was. I thought you were like saying Logar, but like in a derpy way. Yeah, I thought that was a Logar <laughs> joke. No, no, no. No, no, no one wants Logar. No one wants Logar. Valid. I mean, come on. Logar's so shit upon these days that he got his ass kicked when he was a demon Primark by a cloud of smoke and a flock of ravens. That was also a Primark. Yes, but even so, Lorgar's a demon Primark, so that kind of that's a boost in power, and he still got the shit kick out of him. You can't beat the power of <clears throat> Edgar Allan Primark. <laughs> <laughs> Though funny, I've seen some people pointing out that Korax's art on his Primark's novel makes him look like Keanu Reeves. Why would you say that? Why would you say that? No, I can't unsee that. Why would you do this to me? <laughs> Korax is John Wick. Oh no. He got he got angry because Lorgar killed his puppy, now he wants revenge. 
if he's going to be mad at anyone, then he should be mad at, well, actually, our Forest and Omegon are both probably dead, so we can't get mad at them. You can still be mad at someone if they're dead. Yeah. Yeah, but you can't go and get vengeance on them, because Korax has many things, he's not a necromancer. Yet. You could defile his grave. I mean, there's things you can do, you just have to be creative. And in fairness, everyone in the Legion calls themselves Alfaria so we can kick the shit out of all of them. <laughs> the ultimate catharsis. Infinite Alfarius to murder. They're like, wait, no, that's not what we wanted. We were trying to be clever. <laughs> oh no, this has backfired horribly. <laughs> Just so. Just goes up to each Alpha Legionnaire who goes, I am Alfarius, and there's one who goes, I'm Omegon, actually. <laughs> Wasn't it Omegon who led the raid on Deliverance anyway? Uh, or at least organised so, it. I think so. I can't remember off the top of my head. <clears throat> yeah, something tells me Omegon's more involved with the Raven Guard than Alfarius actually was. Well, I mean, you could always just make the joke that you can't tell them apart anyway, so maybe one just blamed the other on it. It's like, yeah, totally Omegon did it. So Ta-ra. everyone's called Alfarius, there's one guy called Omegon, and then there's Dynat. The only guy who's not Alfarius. Yeah, there's just that bloke who has a name. Actually, no, there's Ingo Patch as well. Oh, yeah. Dingo Patch? Yes. Ingo Patch, the uh, first captain of the Legion. Oh. He's okay. not actually a dingo, though. <laughs> it was like, why Why is... Okay. We have another, another uh, wolf-themed or dog-themed... Person, I was going to say I another Austra- Australian themed oh. character. <laughs> oh god, don't give Alpha any more cocking ideas. Yeah, that that was a video. <laughs> it was. The Crimson Lib one. Uh, yeah. Uh, there's something new for Blood Bowl. I think that's just come out, or is just on its way today, so a new oh, yeah. uh, star player. It's, it's um, yeah. Borat, isn't it? Borak. The despoiler, not Borat. Borat. The despoiler. <laughs> Hello, my name is Borat. Because I knew you were going to. Bo- I play the Blood Bowl. Sorry, had to do it. I mean, yeah, because you. I you said you played Blood Bowl. I do. I, I play Skaven though. I love my little uh, ratty boys. I hear your disappointment. I hear it. <laughs> I play elves. <laughs> Me and Skaven are not friends because, well, okay, I had a game last week where I was tag teaming with a Skaven player, and he had a warp lightning cannon. And warp lightning cannons nowadays are just stupid. Oh really? Oh no, I, I don't play like the Sigmar. I, I just I don't play the Sigmar. Hello kids, how do you do? <laughs> <laughs> no, I just play Blood Bowl. Yeah, I, I've not played Blood Bowl myself. I, what, I've constantly thought I should get that. I should get that. I should get that. I've never got around to it. Um, but yeah, that's fair. It, it's a game where <laughs> you bond through your with your friends through suffering. And Nuffle. <laughs> Nuffle. Bonding through suffering is like reading an Ian Watson novel together. <laughs> Just when you thought you were safe. No, because at least at certain points you are having fun. I mean, it's it's like it it's like it's so it's like a love hate relationship playing Blood Bowl. Like my friends. Oh, it's like the Nash. Got it. Yeah. <laughs> kind of. I guess, maybe? A little bit? Sticking, well, on a side note of Slanesh, uh, the Inari are back. They're going to be in White Dwarf this month. Uh, so if you wanted a Inari Codex, tough, buy White Dwarf. Oh, and that just reminds me that um, Wild Rider was ultimately a very underwhelming novel. We'll get to that, I think. Let's just see if there's any more news before we get there. Oh, yes, I have a lot. I, just... I have a lot to talk about that. But I also have a lot to talk about a good book as well. I feel obligated <laughs> to make a sushi joke because Inari, but then I didn't want to sound like I didn't know what the Inari were, so, you know, here we go. <laughs> oh, no, you're good. Um, Doom of Molek, I think, is out maybe by the time this video comes out, if not today. Um, new Warbands for Night Vault. Sabbath World Crusade for Black Library. Which won't be coming uh, out until in- December. Is it just a new edition, or is it like a? Is there actually a new new book in there? It's basically they're remaking the original Sabbath World's Crusade background book, but Graham McNeil's adding new stuff to it from the um, last two Gaunt's Ghost novels. I thought Abbott wrote. Sabbath. That's what I meant. Sorry, 
I mean, not Graham. I don't know what I'm talking about. Da 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 da. da. Wow. Anybody excited about Warhammer Underworlds online? I'm kind of curious about it, actually. I'd like to see where it goes. Like, I haven't played it just because, like, I guess until right now of this uh, this announcement, it was always like physical pieces, and and yeah. I can only buy so many pieces. Okay, I'm already invested in like two to three games. <laughs> Yeah, I've actually got a, an Underworld Warband, uh, the Grotz one, or Goblins one, as you'd probably better know, because they renamed them to Grotz and Sigma these days, don't ask. Um, but I haven't played actual Underworlds because it's a really heavy, like, deck building sort of thing, and you probably need, like, all the expansion packs to get the decks, so I kind of don't want to just play MTG Warhammer. Uh, it's a freemium <laughs> game. Is it? Oh, is I it? I don't know, I'm, guess- I'm guessing. <laughs> Oh. I'm guessing it, it will probably probably have some sort of card pack mechanic, annoyingly, or expansion packs with different warbands in them. Um, is they going to go into early access with two warbands, though they don't say which they are? Um, they're not going to come out in the same order as they came out in the base game, which is nice, because otherwise it would be damn predictable. Um, yeah, I'm curious to see where it goes, though I probably still won't play it, because I don't play PC games, I don't have time and money. And it ends up just being like... A, a crappy reskin of the more time mobile game or something as much or space as wolf. oh gosh mm-hmm. don't even mention that but like oh was... That, that was that was bad <laughs> yeah i was just thinking i think the steam port was i'm oh, sorry go on oh i was just gonna add like i wonder if this is kind of their this uh warhammer underworlds online thing is gonna be like they're trying to compete with oh gosh what's the recent card games that have come out online remy you play one of them MTG Arena? Yeah, that. Hearthstone? Yeah, and Hearthstone, Gwent. like that kind of thing. You think they're trying Gwent. to get into that? That kind of... Uh, I've seen sphere. adverts for Gwent, so that's why I mentioned it. Um, I don't think they're going to try and compete directly, because those are actual card games, uh, whereas Underworlds is a miniatures dice game that has cards. Yeah, it's kind of like so a hybrid. I don't think... And plus the card game yeah. that already came out with Horus Heresy Legions, so... That, also that that's their basically version of Hearthstone just not as good sorry yeah sorry, there's not. like three games that I saw like, that were like that were drop down banners for but we don't really know what they are yet I, I saw that was in the last couple of weeks that there were three oh, yeah. games being published and I don't they didn't give anything away with them aside from oh yeah this is a thing here's like two lines of text have fun yeah, some someone was saying it's going to be Space Marine Two. Doubtful. How would they get would the be lovely? Yeah, how would they get the rights to do that? I thought um, they're having issues with that kind of thing. Oh gosh, what company name is that? So Relic and Sega, wasn't it? Yeah. And THQ. Yeah. And besides, look what happened last time. They got the rights from one of the older game franchises, Total War Three. You know that didn't turn out too well. Yeah. That was unfortunate. I like. Oh gosh, I remember trying to play that game with people, and it was like, oh, oh no, it just it didn't work. I, they tried to please everybody, and they and they pleased no one. Yeah, it's like yeah, they were trying too hard was... to be like StarCraft Two, or mixed with a MOBA. It just didn't work. It did, it did sort of feel like when Dawn of War Three came. Out, I, I've looked at the plot of Dawn of War Three. I never played the game. Uh, but I've looked at the plot of Dawn of War 3, and it does go a little off the rails at the end. Oh yeah, that just got stupid. Like, I'm not going to say Dawn of War also always had that cohesive of a plot that didn't take a lot of creative liberties, like Cornate Space Marine Librarians. The less said about that one, the better. Uh, but that was quite out there, what happened in Dawn of War 3, from what I remember of it anyway. And let's not forget they said, like, hey, we're going to have, you know, DLC for Necrons. Oh, wait, the game tanked so badly, we're going to cancel it. Yeah, they probably didn't have enough money to keep it going, so it's just... It they was had a very Snake unfortunate Snake Tamara skin for the chaplain, Diomedes. <laughs> that was about it. Like, have some skins. Yeah, because that's worth it. <laughs> yeah. But oh well, never mind. I just hope whatever games these are, I hope they don't go down the route with Inquisitor Marta and make it, you need to be online all the time, even in single-player offline mode. 
which kind of defeats the point of it being an offline mode when you need to be online for it. Yeah, that... it depends on whether they wanted to have an online <coughs> multiplayer, I guess. Yeah, but, yeah, but it's like you got to be a able single to play. Player, yeah, you don't. You shouldn't have to be online to play single player. Yes, but if they have things that you unlock through the single player that are then used in the multiplayer and you need to get them from somewhere. I'm not approving of the practice, I'm just saying that there are some practical reasons why devs might need to do that, I guess. Not particularly, because then every time that you connect to the internet it could just update. I mean, there's ways around it. It, It's just kind of a... I think it's an old... It actually isn't even that old of a practice, because I know that like Microsoft got into big trouble when they wanted the Xbox One, I believe, to be online online only and stuff. Yeah. Yeah, and then everyone got upset because it's like not everybody has constant internet, you know? Like, give us a break, guys. We don't all have, like, Google Fiber. <laughs> um, what was the response like? Hey, if you haven't got good internet, then just get a 360. <laughs> yeah, I think they did say something like that. It's just like, what? <laughs> and what was the response? You- Pre-orders for the PS4 skyrocket. <laughs> It's just like, it's such a weird mentality. Like, oh, it, we made something that's inaccessible? Just don't buy our product, forehead. Get out of here. It's like, you don't want people to buy your product? I'm confused. But that's yeah, a little so bit off the topic. Yeah, I was just going to say this. <laughs> and I think Michael's internet has died. No, no, I'm still here. Oh, bloody hell. So, just, just count, give it how I- crappy Discord has been at times. Nah, I just, I had nothing to contribute to that one because I made myself like a complete idiot, so just keep stomp, carry on. Fair enough. So let's re- recite some scenes from Ian Watson novels. <laughs> or we could talk about Wild Riders since you have a massive pile of things to say. Oh, yes. Um, so I talked about... Brace quite, yourselves, kids. I talked about a few things from it last time. Um, not much else of, really of note, apart from one major thing at the end when... The Inari and Saim Han, you know, launch an invasion of the Necron tomb world. There's a big vault, an Eldari vault, in the middle of a tomb complex that was created using a combination of, quote, Necron tier science and Eldari magic. They unlock the vault, and out comes an entire horde of Slaneshi demons. That was sealed away by the Necron tier and the Eldari prior to the war in heaven. No... No, is that just me, or did no. that sound a whole lot like Borderlands? That's just wrong. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I will point. I will point out in regards to Slaneshi demons existing before Slanesh, there is actually a precedent for it, and um, it comes from the old William King novel Farsi, which has a demon prince of Slanesh on one of the original Eldari homeworlds prior to the fall. So there is a precedent for it. But it doesn't change it from being a bit silly that that the Eldari and the Necron tier allied before the war in heaven to combat Slaneshi demons before chaos was even a thing. Oh. Yeah, because this is the Necron tier <laughs> war in heaven. Like we don't know when the Eldari war in heaven was relative to this one, but it's generally accepted. Well, I'd assume it to be after, given the Necron tier and the old ones weren't around in that story. Listen, listen. Since the dawn of time, there has always been the urge to do lewd things. Are you telling me that there wasn't at least (laughs) some Necron somewhere that wanted to do a lewd thing? Like, come on. There is a difference between (laughs) that and keeping demons in a box. (laughs) Like, why would you keep demons in a box? Like, how do you keep demons in a box? It's like so a box a of spiders. It's a combination of Necrontia science and Eldari magic, you, I just said. You just... <laughs> you don't understand how important a box of spiders could be. You need to utilize it. Is this it. like a warp tesseract vault labyrinth portal? <laughs> no! How? That's just... Uh, okay. Fun, fun fact, you can keep demons in tesseract vaults. There is actually a bloodthirster trapped in one in Sons of the Hydra. Huh. And not so, and not only that, the blood first had been slightly necronicized for lack of a better because its fire was all green instead of, you know, fire coloured. Well see no 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 I <laughs> now I know exactly how you can get the Slaneshi demons to be stuck somewhere. You just fill them in like one of those um 
it, it's like a house full of mirrors because all they'll do is just look at the they'll be so distracted with themselves that they just won't leave right that's how it like, works now you just you just tell them that there's an Ian Watson novel and then they'll go <laughs> tra- charging after it that they'll want to read about the what's the what's this quote from from Draco the demon it's quote plump buttocks that's oh a direct gosh. quote that is a direct quote ladies and gentlemen I think we broke Michael. No, I'm trying to get you to stop and move on. Um, oh yes, I know I sound a bit like a Puritan to the other person in the comments who mentioned it. I'm not. I just that just no. Anyway, uh, did they still run with the whole um, you know reincarnated pantheon thing, or did they do anything with that? They didn't actually go any further. They mentioned it a little later, and if Rain was going about how it was, you know, is this all of a hubris? Is this a you know? beings, you know, blah, but they haven't actually pulled the trigger on it. Right. So, it's kind of... Uh, Wait for the sequel. Yeah. Wait, are we talking about they'll, Gilliman's they'll, waifu? <clears throat> yes. <laughs> <laughs> so there, there was one interesting bit um, in regards to the father of the main Simon Hand character, he literally has two souls, like his soul and the soul of his dead wife. And apparently having two souls was causing him to age rapidly and fall sick. And then once Evrain took his wife's soul from him, he was back to normal. Well, now, I, as close bonds and soul shenanigans is a thing with the Eldari, like when a twin dies, the other might just die because... Um, and that's sort of where why Wraith Knights are probably well part of why Wraith Knights are so rare because uh, you don't really have one left alive when the other one dies um, but that's a new one having two souls hmm. all I hear are noises in the background saying Mary Sue but that's just <laughs> me it but Catus Ca- Sicarius isn't in the book though <laughs> If Rain has the risk of becoming a bit of a get out of jail free card character, so I, I hope that that story arc gets resolved in a not Mary Sue ish way, I guess. Though I don't really know how you resolve it. Or what I'm you kind of it. very ten- I'm tentative in regards to the upcoming third novel, if and when it comes out, because Ghost Warrior was pretty decent. It went a bit that shit insane with the whole, you know, hey, it's a Gene Steeler, Ka- Gene Steeler patriarch avatar of Cain. Um, that what? was a bit... Yeah, that, that's the thing. Yep. <laughs> that just, um, it just sounds but, like you got, like, a word scramble of 40k titles and just smashed it together. No, it's canon. Yeah, it's canon. Yeah. It's not my canon. <laughs> I don't allow this. I'm sure some people will think it should be shot out of a canon, but hey. Um, <laughs> but Wild Rider was very... Uh, it seemed like it was, was doing well, though, Like when we talked about it last time. It's like, you know, like, it's promising start, and then it just, you know, slowly collapses in on itself like a flan in a cupboard. It just completely went downhill. It's just so... I suppose the word is disappointing. Yeah. Because I, I had a pretty decent start. It wasn't the best start, yeah, but it was good enough that you wanted to keep reading. And <laughs> then it just went downhill. It's like, uh, pff, it had like on the end. nuggets of, of capability, of promise, and then it just didn't deliver. Yeah, it's like having, you know, what's, what's, what's the. Uh, What's the uh, analogy here? Um, a chocolate-covered turd? <laughs> well, I mean, usually you'd know immediately unless you lick your chocolate-covered stuff. <laughs> well, some people do. Are you, are you telling me that you lick your chocolates? You don't You don't bite no. them? I don't bite my chocolate. No, do, you know, you know the, um, do you have Cadbury fingers in um, Arizona? No, nah, I don't even know what that is. I have there's Capri Sun. Oh, the, the little um, does that like um, <laughs> the like little chocolate covered um finger biscuits. Like you, best thing you do, you dip them in tea and then you like suck the chocolate off when you dip it in the tea and then bite down on the biscuit when you got chocolate off it. What? What? Do you not do that with your? Do you not do that with your Cadbury's fingers, Michael? I don't drink tea. 
Is that like lady fingers? Or No, they're like I'll, I'll, I'll show you a picture later on. <laughs> I think we're learning some interesting food habits of Mr. Remy here. <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'm not, comment, I'm I not the only one here. Coffee, so. You're British and you don't drink tea? Or coffee. Or alcohol. How could you? You're not living up to the stereotype. I'm disappointed. Yeah, I came out of a supermarket once and someone goes, Oh, mate, have you got, uh, have you got a light? Like, no, I don't smoke. You got any beer on it? No, I don't drink. God, it's too now, yeah. <laughs> Genuinely, that happened. Oh my first gosh. Year. <laughs> ah, the north of England. Yes. Um, so since you are in the north, does that mean you have curry sauce with everything? Personally, no. But or is that just more of a, or is that more of a Midlander thing? That my, I'm sure there are some people who have curry sauce with things, but not with everything. Because when I lived with, because when I lived in the Midlands, pretty much everyone I knew there had curry sauce with everything for some reason. Well, the Midlands is a backwards land. <laughs> <laughs> How can it be backwards if it's in the middle? Trust me, you do not want to go. <laughs> Oh, actually, man, do you remember the um, languages video that I did, like, oh, God, two years ago? Um, and I feel like there was, I made a comment about how most people can't understand each other's low gothic from planet to planet. And someone made, like, a, a north-south comment. I think it was you. Mm. Um, I, re- I, just, I remember that. I always come back to that when I think of people roasting the Midlands. And I mean, languages. that's this way. Even GW doesn't like the Midlands. There's a reason they put, you know, the planet Birmingham as being a backward, backwards world that, you know, doesn't understand anything. Is that considered a self-burn or self-depreciation? It's called burning your neighbours because... Because <laughs> Nottingham and Birmingham don't get on, apparently. Yeah, I, I can't think of a good US analogy of one of like intercity rivalry where just one roosts the other out of habit. I suppose it'd be like New York, New Jersey, maybe? I don't know. I mean, we have it with all our universities, so I'm at Manchester, and jokes about Man Met were very common. But I mean, there's, like, comparisons where I live, but then nobody knows those cities, so it's not very useful. To be fair, half the people in here probably don't know what we're talking about, so I wouldn't worry about it. I think a lot of people are now thinking, what's well, she's got to do with 40k? Yeah. Since when did this thing ever stay completely on track? But since we'll look for a track, let's uh, <laughs> do we have anything else? Aside yeah. from- yes, um, I managed to read uh, through Requiem Infernal, which honestly was a pleasant surprise and is actually one of the best 40k books I've read in a long time. So for context, what is Requiem Infernal? Who wrote it? What's it about? Um, so the book was by Peter Ferravari, who's mainly known for writing books about Tau and Gene Stealer cults. He wrote Firecast. Yeah, that's the one I know him for. He also wrote um, Order of the Spir- Cult of the Spiral Dawn, I think it was. The Gene Stealer cult one. Okay. Um, so basic premise, um, a... Sororitas Hospitella is returning to her original world, her original convent, um, along with a group of injured Imperial Guard soldiers who are being transported there to be healed up and treated. Uh, a whole bunch of shit, weird shit starts happening. People start dying. Hey, there's some weird seven-legged flies talking to people. Oh, oh no, chaos is spilling out everywhere, and now everyone's dying, and now there's this bleh, demons everywhere. Bleh. With little to no little to no bolter porn, it's mostly done as a horror story. Spooky. Like the the actual gunfighting stuff doesn't actually take place until like the last fifth of the book for the big climax, which is really good. One thing that's actually quite interesting it actually shows a canonical canonical representation of entities aligned to the chaos gods. Switching allegiance to a different chaos god. They can do that? Apparently. Well, at least these ones can anyway. Um, these are like beings known as the Incarnates. Like, um, there was about seven of them in t- total. Oh, God, um, I'm having time flashbacks. Huh? Sorry, carry on. 
the incarnates were the embodiments of the magical laws in the end times of fantasy and people generally t- decided to pretend the end times didn't exist carry on <laughs> um, so you had um, the blind watchman who was Nurgle the bleeding angel which was Slanesh the torn prophet which was Zinch the burning martyr which was Corn. Um, and there's some others whose allegiances weren't actually stated initially, like um, the Penitent Knight was one, and I can't remember the other two off the top of my head. All but, of those titles sounded like friggin' metal bands or something, just saying. <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. Um, so the Blind Watchman basically becomes the de facto leader of these incarnates and basically starts converting some of the other incarnates, you know, to Nurgle, or the Path of Flies, as he called it. Um, so the Bleeding Angel joins them, the Penitent the Knight joins them, there, and their appearances start changing to match, you know, Nurgle, disease, decay, etc. The Burning Martyr is too batshit full of rage to, j- to join him, so, you know, he gets killed, having his skull crushed. And the Torn Prophet is just so powerful that he's forced to be locked away. Which is interesting considering it's Zinch. Then again, Zinch was originally one of the most powerful Chaos Gods, if not the most powerful originally. But anyway. Definitely uh, the most powerful at one point because of the oh, whole yeah. staff debacle. Insert yes. obligated just as planned. Indeed. Also, I love the fact that they actually killed the Cornate guy by a skull crush because, like, that is the ultimate insult to Corn because no skull for the skull throne. Tis and the also, greatest injustice. And also, minor spoiler, um, the main sister Hospitala character, she's technically a demon host. She has a demon living inside her called Mercy. And when it takes over, it changes her form so she becomes like having like bladed clawed fingers and stuff like that. And she, she like goes on a rampage. The entire time? Or did Gut possess through the book? Um it's just revealed that she was possessed at some point, and it appears that she was possessed at some point when she was previously a Repentia. Because when she was a Repentia, she was known by the name of Mercy. Bum, bum, so it's like, bum. ooh. Yes. Oh, there's such an easy Overwatch joke, but I'm not going to bother because I know it used to trigger memories. Yeah, I was thinking the same thing. <laughs> um, What else was there? Slov... Oh yeah, um, the scene with the Commissar and the grenade at the end, because the Imperial Guard soldiers, they end up all getting, you know, corrupted and turned to plague zombies, but the Commissar still holds uh, enough of his um, identities to know what what's happening is wrong, and he basically just pulls a grenade out of his coat pocket and just detonates it in the middle of the group of plague zombies, which was awesome. Because he was just, like, saying, like, you know, I'm not a zombie, like... And he, tried to say, he actually managed to say his name as a plague zombie and then just went, boom. He's just like, nope, I'm out, boys. I'm not gonna do this. Basically, like, I'd rather die than live like this, yeah. <laughs> that is pretty metal. It was pretty metal. And also, uh, surprisingly, the Angels Resplendent were in the book. Which is interesting, considering that the Angels Resplendent haven't actually been a thing for a while, because they got changed to the Angels Penitent. Well, how old's the book? The book is, like, brand new. It only came out, like, a few weeks ago. Like, two weeks ago, if that. I'm... Oh, I... I, 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 Because I remember Atlas Infernal coming out, like, years ago. No, no, Atlas Infernal, which is what I'm also started reading, that's an old one, but Requiem Infernal is, like, two weeks old. Oh, I assume they were the same series and that one was the prequel to no, the other. No, 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 no. <laughs> they're probably just... No. Uh, that would be too They're easy. probably trying to get everybody excited for the sisters, because I am. Oh, yes. I, I think a lot wait. of people got excited over the community survey to win the new Sisters of Battle Army. Oh, my gosh. Well, I got to the end... Actually, I filled the survey out and I got to the end of it and it's like, please enter your email address for a chance to start winning the Sisters of Battle Army. And I just left it, I wanted to leave it blank because I didn't really want the Sisters Army. I thought, well, I'm not in the pool, so I can't win it. Therefore, someone who wants it wins. I was like, no, you must enter. Like, I thought the, I know it's an incentive to do the survey, but why is it mandatory? <laughs> to let you know if you got it or not. But I didn't want it. It doesn't see, matter you get what it. you want. If you... And if my name wasn't in the pool, then how could I get it? 
It's data, my friend. They want your data. They want to send it to Mark Zuckerberg. <laughs> well, that, that's Facebook. No, they'll probably send it to Google. That's that's, that's too topical. Let's, let's, let's just move on. Hello, human. <laughs> Please enter your emailing address now. Beep boop. Oh, God, the machine spirit finally got him. Your win while trial period is over. Are, are you saying that Remy got the Zuck? <laughs> <laughs> so welcome to the Memetacular episode of the <laughs> Podcasters. It's not episode 50 yet. No, but see, no, it's episode 69, which makes it even worse. See, your biggest mistake was inviting me on here, not expecting me to, to derail things. Oh, I was fully expecting this to go off the rails just because of what episode it was. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, that's why I'm just rolling with it as best I can, so that's fine. I mean, in, in uh, fairness, if you were, you know, Thunder or Dr. White, we, we would have been gate-crashed already by someone being drunk and screaming while waving a sword around. Because that happens. <laughs> Accurate. A lot. That or you're just yelling about <laughs> drinking food dye. Yes. And it was his it was his idea, not mine. I can't I, <laughs> why is it Remember he, he came up to me and say, Hey, if you get ten people to like this comment on Twitter, I'll drink this bottle of food colouring. Okay. Are you saying that he just wanted an excuse to drink a bottle of food colouring? <laughs> I think that's exactly what happened, Why yes. Why did he just drink it? Because this is Dr. White. It's so gross. Okay, so we're back on topic. So if you want to check out the video of Dr. White drinking the food colouring, check out the episode where he was the uh, featured guest. It's oh at the end. Gosh. Ew. Yes. So finally enough, um, Fresh and uh, Zegram wants to both appear on a show to have a food colouring drinking contest. What is that? Right, let me just find my notes and pencil and not to get those two on the same show. <laughs> Why, what is... It'd be like the Ian Watson drinking game, but with food colouring shots. What would that accomplish? Like Nothing. Turning your piss multicoloured, I don't know. It's just... You drink the food color. I mean, it's not like alcohol where you could like pass out or something. I'm also not saying they should drink alcohol. That's not what I'm saying. <laughs> but you're what not gonna... about if we get shots of vodka filled with food coloring? I think you just get sick. Yes. Anyway, moving on. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Um, speaking of guests, Carl did say he wanted to come back on at some point, so we need to talk to Carl about that. Okay. Good to know. Um, so, given you've read this horror, is this part of like, the Warhammer Horror series record? It's but... not, no. Even though it's a horror story, it's not part of the horror line, which is a bit weird. But it gives hope that the horror line should be, excuse me, pretty good if they can write non-horror stuff that's very horror-ish. Mm. Oh, definitely. Um... Also, I haven't had a chance to listen to it myself to confirm, but apparently in that Petition's Flame horror audio drama, apparently not only does the Ordo Kronos make an appearance for the first time like ever, but apparently they managed to capture one of the Legion of the Damned. Oh yeah, you mentioned that last time, now that I think about it. Yeah, so if anyone's actually listened to it, can they confirm it in the comment section below? Because if it's actually true, I want to listen to it. Or at the very least, know what the flip is going on. They, well, that too. How do you catch one of those guys, though? Exactly. I, I like to think, it's, you know, the whole James Wood approach, you know, like, ooh, piece of candy. Ooh, piece of candy. Ooh, piece of candy. <laughs> I was going stasis box, box, like, ooh, but... something to purge. Ooh, something to purge. <laughs> I was going stasis bomb, but, you know. Flypaper. <laughs> Just a huge wad of flypaper. Fireproof, of course. Or maybe it's just a big mouse trap and you know, it's filled with cheese. They just, they just to cover him in flame retardant. 
to, oh no, my flame has been extinguished. I am our sad now. <laughs> he just gets sad and stands there. That's how they caught him. It's not that they actually caught he him, he just got depressed. He'd have the face of the, you know, the crying cat. <laughs> so, uh, yes. Um, what else is there? Da, 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 da. Unless it's time for questions, or is it a bit early for that? Well, I mean, I've been doing an absolute bucket of reading the last couple of weeks, though it is all Sigmar, so I can skip over it to people who don't care. So welcome to the new Sigmar segment of this, <laughs> of this podcast. I mean, I, I'd be more than welcome with having a Sigmar segment every time, but I don't have the time to read everything, so or, never mind. Or I could read a passage from an Ian Watson novel. <laughs> you know what? Why? Let's... No. <sighs> you know what? Yes was that. <laughs> that was not a yes. I am. I am not enabling this. <laughs> no, we're not. Um, so, if people are interested, um, I read a couple of different things. From uh, actually, I'll talk about the main one, which was a bunch of shorts called Gods and Mortals, and it had like four different uh, Hamilcar Bear Eater stories. Now, Hamilcar Bear Eater is a Stormcast, and he's the most space wolfy Stormcast you'll ever come across. Like, hey, you look at the guy; he looks like a space wolf. And B, he's got the stupid, arrogant, cocky streak that, well, goes with Space Wolves. And annoyingly, David Gamma writes him so well that I actually like him. Which is very, very annoying, because I'm not supposed to like Space Wolves. So, well done, David Gamma. Come at me, bro. I still haven't forgiven you for the Ferris Manus nonsense, but I approve of the way you write Stormcast. Hmm? But did he eat sand? No. I mean, he managed to bait a massive kraken to sink an entire cornate fleet and then shame a corn lord for using guns uh, in one story. Uh, there was another one where he 1v1'd a giant skaven war construct and won. Um, there was another one um, oh, which involved Man... Well, not Manfred directly, but Agents of Manfred. That was one. And there was another one um, where something else happened. What happened in that one? He ate a bear. No, uh, I think that I think the bear eater moniker comes from his old tribe in Gur before he was a stormcast. But but yeah. did he eat a sandwich? <laughs> no. <laughs> now, can we point out the fact that um, that Vulcan being a cuddler is actually canon? It's because he's a wholesome boy. He just goes up to Dawn and says, May I embrace you, brother? No. And Vulcan just does it anyway. Are you saying that part of TTS is actually canon? Yes, it is. Ish. I mean, I'm not complaining. Uh, I still remember we had ADB on it. It was like, so did you actually write Kitten knowing about DTS? I was like, no, I wish I had, but no. I remember that. But yes, I just posted the passage um, in regards to Vulcan's canonical cuddles. It's like, I would embrace you, Vulcan confessed, but that was never your way, was it, Rogal? Dawn laughed gr- gruffly. Abstination is a wise decision. Vulcan embraced him firmly anyway and felt his affection for his brother return, <laughs> albeit awkwardly. So yes, Vulcan gives massive cuddles and it's canon. You will take the hugs and you will like them. Well, I mean, when you put it that way, it has a bit of a dark connotation. <laughs> the sound of several shattering vertebrae. I mean, he's a Primarch. He probably doesn't even mean to crush somebody, but just because of his overwhelming strength, it's just, oops, I just snapped your back. Sorry. Makes you wonder how he'll get on with a beast of Nurgle, considering they just want to cuddle people as well. They're just, you know, covered in poisonous slime. The slimy puppies? Yes. I like the slimy puppies. They're also disgusting, and I hate germs, but they're so cute somehow. <laughs> I, I'm i not so keen on the new beasts of no. I kind of like the old ones as much as they look weird. I I find the new ones to be a bit derpy. That's personally. why they're so cute! <laughs> they're super they're derpy! Like pugs. Yeah. 
The diseased pugs. They're kind of like diseased pugs. Sorry, I'm just having a look through the questions. Oh, okay. Since we'll be getting there in a minute. Is I'm it sure. question time? It can be. I have no idea. It's That's your decision. I am only here as a visitor. Unless Rem's got anything else to raise, then I can do. Um, there was one other thing. Um, I've got to try and find where I made a note about it. Um... Oh yes, I, I remember freaking Dr. White out when I posted that passage from the Lucas novel where Lucas insinuates that he has sex with a road trader. And his response was just a picture of that weird rubbery loaf of blood saying like, like when will you learn your actions have consequences? That one. <laughs> oh, God, Lucas is, is quite a quite a trickster in many ways, I guess. Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. Well, um, when the novel was written on it, bet, then, yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, so the reason um, for the long life of the Eldari, it's not just because of their biology. It's actually directly tied to the webway itself. Oh, yeah, you mentioned this to me before. Forgot that. Yes. Um, basically, for humans and Eldari, increasing time spent in the webway stalls and reverses the aging process. Which explains why everyone in Kimura is, you know, fine and dandy. Mainly because they had their soul refreshed by ridiculous overkill every night. But And yes. the fact they're living in the middle of the webway, which means their aging process is also being reversed. Does that mean that they're all eventually going to become small man children? I don't think it goes that far. I think it just goes like... You're like, hey, you're no longer turning old. You're now just staying, you know, in your mid twenties for the rest of your life. What? Who determines that I mean, mid twenties is when someone wants to stop? Like, and I mean, with Drakari, like they do look old until they go like watch a show in the arenas, and then they come out looking rejuvenated. So it can't just be webway effects. But anyway. But yeah, that's uh, pretty much all I have to share this week in regards to what I have been reading. Yeah, in before we get all the comments saying, but this means Jack is icon must be alive because he didn't age because he went into the webway. I'm mostly surprised that Remy didn't say something about Mr. Watson again. <laughs> well, now that you mention it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, questions. Uh, okay, we don't want to start. Oops. Uh, after the end of the Siege of Terror miniseries, uh, do you think there will be a book about what really happened on Caliban? Unless that's actually going to be part of the Siege series itself, considering it happens pretty much directly after it. Yeah, could be in part of the series, yeah. Like a spin-off, maybe? Definitely possible. Season 2, Electric Boogaloo. I mean, it depends on whether they decide to do a scouring series as well. Like, we, we don't know yet. It's it's highly plausible, but... I'm still waiting for my Reign of Blood series. Yeah, that would be... That would be interesting. The Age of Apostasy and the Reign of Blood. I'm still waiting for my Gaskell Thracker origin novel as well. Guy. <laughs> yes, come on, Guy, get on it. <laughs> You're like the only person who can write orcs properly. Please do it. <laughs> Yeah, and I and while we're at it, Phil Kelly, can we have another Farsight novel? Because damn, Crisis of Faith was too good. Want more of it, please? It only took you two years to read it. <laughs> yeah, it took me a long time to get round to read it. Once I started, I read it in like three days. So, just getting round to it. I won't make that mistake twice. Well, with the middle of school and stuff, it's kind of hard to, to balance actually reading fun things and reading very, very dry school books. I can imagine. <laughs> yeah, I mean, between um, <clears throat> video research and doing... I mean, mine's less of a reading degree. I, I've been doing a lab project for like 16 hours a week, um, just of lab time plus a report. So, yeah, I know what you mean about dry and, science and academic stuff versus hobby yep. stuff. Uh, okay. Uh, will either of you ever record a session of either Wrath and Glory or the AOS RPG? Um, honestly, like some of my friends have tried, and I have tried recording it, but 
still working on it. So there may be a session, but I don't think I'm going to be playing in it. I'll probably just be there snarking as a commentator. Gotta have a peanut um, gallery somewhere. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, I've had a few people ask me in regards to a Dark Heresy or Rogue Trader game recording. And I've considered it, but I need to get a hold of the books and familiar myself with the rules and stuff like that. Yeah, that's the sort of why I decided to just take up the snark role. Like, I'll get a rule book off the DM or GM or whatever they call them in these games and just decide, yeah, I'll just read those and let them actually play the game so I don't have to. But Remy, I've invited you to play role-playing games. <laughs> you always said you were so busy. I have been busy as well, then, <laughs> so I haven't had a chance to read through the books. I'm just books. giving you a hard time. Because <laughs> I've got other books to read as well. <laughs> we can just blame it on Ian Watson. There we go. How's that? Okay. Uh, have you read the book Mechanicus? Yes. It was a while ago, though. Okay. Yeah, same here. Okay. Like a long time ago. <laughs> well, there's a thing in it called the New Sphere. Does that ring a bell? The New Sphere. That does ring a bell, yeah. It... It's described as a golden light halo of information, and it's implied that it's connected in a way to the warp, or at least it's warp-based tech, according to this commenter. Does that sound yeah. about right? Hmm. Kind of. Like, I, I vaguely remember that. <laughs> so the question goes on to ask, is it possible that the Emperor's Saints are a physical manifestation of new sphere information from that person, and it's just a replicated copy in the physical world. Uh, you kind of cut out there. I didn't. I didn't hear all of what you said. Sort of like, I, like, is the new sphere is just replicating and creating the living saints, basically? You can cut out again, mate. <laughs> oh, for goodness <laughs> sake! <sighs> is it possible that the emperor's saints, i.e., the living saints, are a physical manifestation of new sphere information from that person? replicated into the physical world. Did you get that that time? Mostly. So, yeah, most of it. So it's kind of like soul projecting, I think, is what you're getting at? Sort of like creating, like using binary information to create physical being out of warp tech. Hmm. Which is interesting, I, I suppose. I'd probably need to reread through the book to familiar my, familiarize myself with it before I can make an informed decision, because it's been so long since I've read that book. It, yeah, like, I don't like, think I ever have. Like a, a good like eight years, I think it was. <laughs> like it sounds yeah. plausible, but like, yeah, it's also been a while. I mean, I guess in the theoretical sense of how, I don't know. Do do humans also have the ability, kind of like orcs do, where if they believe something hard enough, it becomes a thing. With faith, yeah. yes. Like, would would it kind of? I mean, that's what the acts of faith are. Well, yeah, but I mean, like, is is that kind of what it that halo would be like tapping into? It's just a, another form of it. It's it's sort of implying that it's almost got it's a it's a halo of information, so it contains a bunch of what I would assume to be binary or whatever code it was written in. Um, and then it translates that code into a physical being using the power of the warp. Is it kind of like a projection, but not a projection of belief, more like a projection of code? Which is just a little odd. Better, it almost sounds like creating a soul in a sense, like a, an AI soul. Yeah, that's a thing. Machine spirits, apparently, according to Rem last time. So maybe it is plausible. I don't know. It's a big. It's a big question mark. But I mean, just theoretically speaking, I much prefer the imperial demon theory personally. Slash pseudo. I mean, I wouldn't necessarily rule it out, but I can't really confirm either way at this point. But it's certainly an interesting possibility. Nothing else. Something to think about. Oh yeah, definitely. Okay, um, have you listened to the Al Martin Lady audio drama? No. Okay, I'll uh, leave that one, because uh, it talks about the one of the things that happens in there, so I'll leave that, I think. Spoilers! Um, well, partly spoilers, partly intro. Well, 
it's not really a spoiler. It's just sort of a, a side point that. Could... The only thing I know about the audio drama is that apparently the decree passive gets revoked. But that's all I know. And I say apparently because yeah, I haven't it's... been able to confirm it. So. Yeah, it, it's not that. It's okay. I'll just I'll do it. Uh, so a custodian tags along with Celestine and Greyfax and basically says he doesn't like the Imperial cult. Same idea as Gilliman, because Gilliman doesn't like the Imperial cult either, as a rule of thumb anyway. Right. Um, and the and the question then says, could that lead to groups within the Inquisition or the Ecclesiarchy putting out kill orders on the Custodes, um, <laughs> since already be a case of they're too important, we can't kill them? Do you really want to be the guy who's putting out a kill order on the Emperor's personal bodyguards. Like, that just sounds also like a huge waste of resources. Like, they're already there. Why Why would you get rid of something that is really strong and could be useful if something goes wrong? Also, like, if you did that, you'd have to kill all the Space Marines as well. Yeah. Plus, there's kind of, of the facts, like, you know, one old, like, you know, the Captain General is one of the High Lords as well. Yeah, just so. That- <laughs> yeah, I can just imagine that being very awkward at the next senator. I mean, so Ecclesiarch <laughs> about these kill squads that have been targeting my custodians on campaign, Who created by the I- emperor himself. Blah 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 blah. Yes, inquisitorial representative. Why are the order hereticus not dealing with this? Oh wait, you approve? What? <laughs> yes, that would be a very awkward high yeah. lords meeting. So that's it. Just wouldn't be logical in that sense. I mean, there's lots of. I guess people that you could complain be like, eh, that person's annoying. I don't like them, but you don't have to. You don't have to put a kill order on them. See, this is what Drake yeah, and Vangarich the- had to do. <laughs> Drake and Vangarich did nothing wrong. <laughs> yeah, sort of in the idea of the Ultramarines themselves. Theoretical. The Custodians are heretics. We should kill them. Practical. That's a stupid idea. Just a tad. <laughs> Even though technically. Gilliman did break the Emperor's dec- decree by, you know, ordering the Custodians around, considering that the decree in regards to the Custodians was, no one but the Emperor shall command them. He is officially the Emperor's regent. But he is not like the, emperor. the Emperor. No he one but the Emperor. He is like the He is. <laughs> but Valoris is actually going along with it. So, enough said? Well, it's like he's the only... A bunch of heretics decreeing the Emperor's edicts. He's the only living son. (laughs) So, you know, the only descendant. So when typically someone dies, it goes to the the next of kin. True, but the Emperor's not dead. Which is lying. Okay, in a coma that also happens. (laughs) (laughs) That means that Gilliman is now Lion's regent. So we're back at the regency problem. Oh, yes, because, you know, Lion being the firstborn son, so... Well, Lion is also theoretically in a coma for as as much as we know. He's just hung over. Yeah, he'll the- be fine. <laughs> just give him a cup of coffee; he'll be fine. It's like ten thousand year ha- hangover. You know, it's fine. Yeah. Okay, this is aimed at me, but I'm going to put it out to everyone. Um, so, because I'm going to be going into teaching science, uh, I'm going to be a science teacher. Hopefully, once I've graduated, I'll be going uh, into a training program. Crossed. What part of the f- yeah, thank you. Uh, what part of the 40k law would you like to be real so that you could include it in your lessons? Um, I don't think you quite realise quite what you're implying in terms of, like, what technology is in 40k. I mean, honestly, like, fusion power, most Tau technology, like battle suits and jetpacks, because, you know, Iron Man's quite popular. Uh, FTL, that would be nice, without using the warp, preferably. Uh, so how, yeah. about, how about some, you know, abominable intelligences, eh? I mean, AI is almost there, so... Or some servitors, how about that? No, that's lobotomizing people, for no good reason. That's not so deep back to 12 year old. <laughs> It'll be so. better on the taxpayer to take these criminals, lobotomize them, and turn them into useful, productive members of society by sticking them in a factory for the rest of their lives. Or you could just have you know. automated <laughs> stuff to run the factories, you know not have to lobotomize people. I should not have put this... <laughs> I should not have asked this question. I forgot that Romulo's had a slightly unhinged sense of humour. It's cheaper on the taxpayer and provides a labour No, force. you could just servitors, make machines. Servitors just you? make the machines, Remy. You don't have to lobotomize people. Alright, let me just clear my desk.
Hey! There you go. <laughs> and it wasn't even Ow. mortar related. That's the amazing thing. That's because I diffused it so many <laughs> times. Just trying not to. Right, anyway. Um, since we talked about Vulcan, do you know how Russ and Vulcan got on slash viewed one another? Is it ever brought up? I don't recall it off I the top of my head. Any. I mean, I've read a lot of books pertaining on Space Wolves and Russ. I don't remember anything particularly. I haven't read all the books, but I mean, not from what I read. Yeah, I, remember I don't remember them being Russ an interaction between them. Because Russ interacted with Magnus, obviously, when, when you know, he beat the shit out of him. Um, he's interacted with Angron, he's interacted with Dawn, Khan, Sanguinius, Horus. Lorgar. When did Russ and Lorgar get involved? Art reached Secundus, he was the one that stopped the wolves and oh, the yes. coming to Oh, yeah, 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 you're right. Cry baby Lorgar. I don't uh, recall him in Vulcan, though. No, I think was, Vulcan was found quite late, though, wasn't he? So Yeah, he was, yeah. I mean, in the only the only promox I know Vulcan to have interacted with, you know, um, Curse when Curse was torturing him, Ferris Manus, because um, the very first campaign Vulcan was brought on was with Ferris Manus. Good start. Um, try to remember who else. Uh, Rogel Dawn. Was he ever around the Secundus crew? Or was he killed at that point? Vulcan came back, but he was a bit batshit insane, and then John Grammaticus stabbed him with a piece of rock. Yeah, I don't know if Gilliman or Sanguinius or Johnson were saw crazy they, Vulcan. Yeah, Gilliman saw happened. Gilliman had crazy Vulcan in his like his big hospital thing in a big glass box. <laughs> because well, that's gonna end well. Because Vulcan was batshit insane and he was still healing from, you know, planetary impact oh like in a in like a Healy yeah. tube I thought you meant like you literally just put him in a box so it's like oh. no he was a, no he wasn't like a big glass box where he was literally had like he was just musculature he didn't have like skin or anything he was just like being against the glass because he was at this point insane oh my gosh because you know yeah man's a perpetual bear that in mind as well and he also you know spent you know a shit ton of time being tortured by Conrad Kurz yeah many deaths so uh that happened. So it did give us the awesome sight of, you know, a Vulcan tackling Conrad Curse out of a window. Which was awesome. Does that count as, as a yeet? It I does. So. <laughs> tackling out the window. It's a selfie. He yeeted him out of the window. Does that, does that make sense? <laughs> I, I'm, not, I'm not up to date with all the hip, hip slang the kids <laughs> use today because I'm an old fart. Broadly, it means when you just chuck something. <laughs> so. Oh yeah! Oh yeah! He yeeted himself and goes out the window. Then. Is this what we have to get the whole, you know, the whole dab, boom, 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 noises? No, that's when you get like the the air horns. It goes. Bee, 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 bee. <laughs> so, how are you doing, fellow kids? Are you playing the Fortnite? <laughs> Thought you were gonna say the forty k, like I did with Age of Sigma. <laughs> <laughs> Do you play the Sigma? Fort case. <laughs> Do you play the Space Crusades? Oh no. In, in, in all seriousness, Space Crusade was fucking awesome. I think I've got a Dreadnought from Space Crusade. Oh, uh, yeah, the um, Ed 209 Dreadnoughts. They were awesome. <laughs> Those are the really, really old ones. Yeah, the ones, the other things yes. from Robocop, no. yeah. I think mine was a Chaos one because it had an angry face. <laughs> they, all, they all had angry faces. Did they? Yeah. Oh. Fair. I'm okay. I'm back with the old Chaos androids. They were charmingly silly. Just like 40k in general. <laughs> hey. Yeah, pretty much. Uh, sticking with things that are slightly old and also sticking with video games a little with games a little bit uh, do you think it is possible for there to be a AOS and or 40k MMO in the style of quote unquote World of Warcraft well I mean that that opportunity was lost with the World of Warcraft just cause I mean that's what it was supposed to be initially and then I don't think that MMOs are all that popular anymore other than like the 
oh my gosh, what is it? Uh, final the Final Fantasy MMO, and well, World of Warcraft itself. I mean, there already was like a Warhammer MMO which died, Warhammer Online, and there was a 40k one being planned that just got cancelled and turned to Eternal Crusade, from what I understand. Yeah, Eternal Crusade comes to my mind. Yeah, I just don't think that it's a very viable kind of like game type anymore, just because it takes so much to invest in, and you have no idea if you're even going to get that that money back, so it's just yeah not worth it. Yeah, I think like, a subscription model game wouldn't work. It, it just wouldn't. Uh, but sort of like a, a, a one a one and done purchase, um, maybe like build your own servers, private servers, and then you can just world build from there. Could be interesting. Um, I don't know. I I don't know if the ship sailed or whether the ship's just gone and will come back again later when that's back in style. Who knows? Yeah, it, it'll highly depend. I think it's it's not the right time. There there are other types of game structures that would be a lot better. I mean, of course, I think all of us would really like the uh, Space Marine 2, if that would ever be a thing. How, how about a 4K kart racer? I mean, I, would, I wouldn't I would say no, but I also wanted... We can we can have a new version of Gorka Morka. I mean, I wanted Bloodborne, call, like, uh, go-kart, so, you know, <laughs> that's a sign of my taste. That'd be awesome. <laughs> How about Soulsborne cards so you have Dark Souls and Bloodborne oh mixed gosh. in? For maximums, you are dead. With Zekiro as oh DLC. Gosh. It's true. Dev, isn't it? Sekiro okay. card. <laughs> okay, have either of you read the Horus Heresy anthology, The Silent War? You can't say that again? The Silent War, or is Heresy Anthology? No. The Silent War, I haven't got that one, no. Okay, never mind. Because uh, it's kind of got, it's got a Malkador quote, which I think is, uh, it's it's kind of a major spoiler, so I'll uh, I'll leave it. Is there any more of a spoiler that, than his thoughts on female Primarchs? It was the pr- traitor Primarch he would save. Alpharius? <laughs> no, actually. Oh. Is it is it Rusty Boy? Want, do you want me to spoil it or might you... might as well. Horus Heresy novels are, are finished now, so you might as well. Lorgar. What? Why the hell would you want to save Lorgar? According to this commenter, Lorgar. You can't argue, mate. Uh, just according to this commenter, Lorgar. That's it. Huh. What a waste. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, te- 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 technically, if Lorgar doesn't turn, then nobody turns. Except they do turn, because Erebus turns everyone. But I, I understand that if you want the Imperium to be a civilian sort of empire, as opposed to a galactic force of conquest, aside from Magnus, because, well, Magnus is needed for the Golden Throne, Lorgar is one of the most useful traitors to keep around of all of them. But it's Lorgar. But they think about, think about it the other <laughs> way, though. If you're Malkador and you think, right, the Imperium needs to be left in a state where when I die or when or if the Emperor is taken out of commission, the Imperium needs to be able to run properly. I've already got my Gilliman, I've got my Dawn, I've got uh, I've got Ross, I've got Lion, I've got Khan, who will probably die anyway, Korax will probably die anyway. Uh, I've got the basics set up for the Primarchs to be involved in the Imperial bureaucracy, as sort of empire builders and uh, task forces, organizers, you've got a figurehead in Sanguinius. Amongst the traitors, you don't have that. Like, you have Magnus, but he was going on the Golden Throne anyway. And then you have Horus, war leader, not needed. Angron, berserk, not needed. Kurz, psychopathic, not needed. Mortari. Uh, I, I, I will challenge you on that um, because both Horus and Vulcan pre heresy, when they were discussing the roles of each Primarch, when Vulcan asked what Kurz's role was, Horus responded saying his role is necessary. So basically, Horus, basically Kurz would be, in essence, a silent enforcer to keep people in check with fear if diplomacy did not work. You can use Korax for that, though. But Kurz was more effective at that. Cor- Agreed, but if you're... Ima- I was going to say, Korax Sorry. probably 
isn't willing to go to I, the same depravity, I guess, as as Kurz as well. Yeah. I mean, when, once Korax returned to the Raven Guard, the Raven Guard pretty much ceased being terror troops and became more of guerrilla troops. Granted, I'll give you that. Uh, but they, I just sort of get it. If you're in Malkador's world, of, all right, I can approximate Kurz using a combination of Korax and Russ. There's no one on the loyalist side who can do quite what Lawguard does, with the possible exception of Sanguinius, but Sanguinius isn't exactly the preachy type. But I thought... So they'll like, just have Lawguard as the Pope. It, yeah. But, but like, imagine Lawguard converted to the Imperial troops. But the Emperor going doesn't out there want... And, he doesn't want, like... He, I thought he was trying to get rid of religion. He wasn't trying to perpetuate it. He is, it. but that's the thing. If you can, if you can turn Lawguard and make him not super preachy and turn him into someone who is a really good orator, who can speak as the voice of the Emperor if the Emperor is busy would, or as a regent. He would cease being Logar. Uh, like, that's the whole point of his character. Like, you would just have it that you might as well just make a new Primark, story-wise. But Malkador's living in a fantasy where like, if I could save one, this is the one I'd pick. So I can see in a practical sense why. It doesn't make much sense, but I can rationalize it a little bit. And maybe there's more explanation in this anthology as to why he actually says it, as opposed to just dropping it in there. Yeah, I'm sure there's more explanation to it rather than him just... Or maybe he does name drop so people can sit together and argue like we are. <laughs> <laughs> that would work. I still maintain Perturaba would have been fine if someone gave him a hug now and again and told him he was doing a good job. He just needed a head pat. And not to have, you know, everyone say, it was like, oh, that's a really good job, Perturaba. I'm going to put this on the fridge. But Dawn did a better picture, so his picture goes over yours. Yeah. Never mind, Perty. Never mind. Pat, pat. I don't know why I'm talking like this now. <laughs> oh, dear. He's doing really well, Pert. We're going to put it on the fridge. Oh, <laughs> the Beatles. Oh, I don't. <laughs> it's a call back to the Oculus Imperia episode, don't worry. Oh, okay. Yeah, I've been living Speaking under a rock, Oculus. so, you know. Uh, okay, question for Remlays. If the Blood Angels had a religious cult following them around before Sanguinius, which they did, mm -hmm. could this mean that both the Ecclesiarchy and that particular order of Sisters of Battle that actively worships Mephiston, which is a thing, I believe? Yes, it is, yep. Is that basically just history repeating itself? I suppose in a way, but I don't think it's being done... In, I don't think they're using the same rituals or anything like that. I think it's just more of like a coincidence at this point. I thought the whole point of 40k is, is you're repeating the past in a oh, sense. Yeah. Like, it's all a cycle. I mean, just look at the Indomitus Crusade. Because from Dang. my understanding, the... Um, the, the Order of Sisters that worship Mephiston, they don't worship the Blood Angels, just Mephiston, specifically. That is very specific. Because <laughs> Mephiston can turn into a giant psychic bat monster thing from his psychic powers, which is not unreasonable, considering that the Scar Lord's Librarian in Crisis of Faith can turn into an angel made out of molten lead. After falling into a volcano. Yes. Which is nonsense. But pretty, but, but pretty epic visual, though. Liquid <laughs> Epic magma. visual, but... Yeah, epic visual until you stop and think about it. This is 4K, do you really have to stop and think about it? It's our job. Yes, I, I, Literally, I, I, I your someone, entire channel is built gonna, about overthinking shit. <laughs> I know someone's going to point out the hypocrisy concerning that I've... <laughs> done the videos, you know, doing the scientific analyses of weapons and shit. <laughs> yeah, the, like, we are not in a position to call out overthinking it. Is it self-referential or self-defamation, whatever the term is? I don't know, but hey. <laughs> anyway. But any um, anyway, Ian Watson. <laughs> Primarchs. Ian Watson's Primarchs. Ian Watson as a Primarch. <sighs> The prime mark of the Emperor's Penetrators. No. <laughs> this is not allowed. It's illegal. I'm just filling, filling the quota. 
Okay. That's the next yes. question. <laughs> no, the next question is going to be something much more modern and reasonable. Oh boy. Uh, so this question asks, how the heck do, and I'm going to read this verbatim, how the heck do Primaris only chapters even work? We've heard in the law that chapters in the Ultima founding are comprised of nothing but Primaris Marines. But does that mean they don't follow the Codex Astartes, i.e. having scouts, then devastators, who then become assault marines, and then they finally become tactical marines? No, because they don't have any of those things. After all, they have all their own special types of troops and seem to be getting even more special troops such as the Vanguard. Does a neophyte just get dropped into a single position after finishing their training and getting their implants, then stay there forever? Like, I actually don't know what happens with Primaris recruitment, like... Once you've got your implants... Maybe they start off in the Vanguard company and then they move into the aggressors and then to the... I've forgotten what the jump troops are called and then to the uh, intercessors. I don't know. I, it, it, it's a weird one because like the Vanguard company are the elite scouts. Like They're more like Space Wolf scouts than actual scouts um, because they're proper elite troops and snipers and stuff like that. But aren't they so, part of the 10th company still? I'm actually not sure. I haven't got um, Vigilus Ablaze or anything to, or um, Shadow Spear to confirm or deny that. Um, but it is interesting that they don't have. We don't. I don't have the uh, Space Marine Codex to actually check what the sort of formation of a Primaris chapter is and how it works. I don't know if it talks about it in the Space Marine Codex at all, if at all ever. Well, I, I need to go and double check. Wouldn't they want their own codex after a certain point? They had a mini codex in the Dark Imperium box set, but that's about it. Yeah, and there was another mini codex in Shadow Spear for the Vanguard. I mean, I figure at some point they're going to have like a, a regular codex just for them. I mean, they're pretty much they're are they quite ready to be a full army? Like, could you have a full Primaris army on tabletop? Yeah, I mean, you've got um, basic troops. You've got heavy sort of heavy infantry with bigger guns you've got really heavy infantry you've got jump troops two types of jump troops actually you've got infiltrators you've got snipers you've got psychers you've got uh apothecaries chaplains captains one transport though they could do with some more um they're missing probably a dedicated melee unit and they're also missing tech marines um and things like that so hang on, hang on. yeah Don't, doesn't the um the repulsor model have a primaris tech marine in the turret I genuinely don't know. Because it has a, there's a Tech Marine sitting in the turret, and considering it's a Primaris vehicle, I presume that's a Primaris Tech Marine. Presumably, yes. Maybe that's why they don't have Tech Marines, because they're all busy piloting the bloody They're tanks. all driving the repulsors. <laughs> that's a kind of a weird place to put them, but all right. I mean, I can't think of anywhere safer. I mean, I'm, I'm just going to post a picture of the uh, repulsor, because... Uh, that is a tech marine in the turret, isn't it? I, I would mean, assume so, because he's got red armor. The amount of red armor, yeah, probably, I assume. Oh, yeah, perhaps. So you have to admit, the repulsor turret looks stupidly small. But but still, like I think when the all when there's all of the kind of models you need to make a fully functioning army without <laughs> having to have like just a regular tech marine or other models, then it would make sense to make like a codex and then have that codex have all of the explanations as to how the, the army is is like structured. At least that's what my they guess. could do in that regard. If they make up a special dedicated, if they like create a brand new chapter codex, similar to like what well, they've like Codex Grey Knights, Codex Dark Angels, Codex Death Watch, have a codex. That's not just Primaris, but actual name chapters. You can actually give it, you know, dedicated lore and stuff. Like one of the um, Ultima founding chapters having a dedicated codex or something. But you can use it as a generic codex Primaris as well. Yeah, that might. Work. That way you can give, that way you can create some special characters for them and stuff as well. Aside from, I mean, if they just did codex Primaris, then they just give models to all the named Ultramarines they've slapped around. And I best give us some, you know. An Ultima founding Primaris chapter that's, I don't know, not Ultramarine descended. Let's have a Space Wolf one. Let's have the Wolf, Codex Wolf Spear. Let's have Codex Wolf Spear. Uh, uh, is it the Wolf Spear or is it the Wolf Brothers? No, the Wolf Brothers were the original ones. The old Wolf, Wolf the Brothers were the original ones. Wolf Spear were the Primaris ones. Yeah, I couldn't remember which way around it was for a second there. 
Unfortunately, even though I am the Space Wolf person, I am out of the loop. <laughs> yes, the Space Wolves have a successor chapter now that actually isn't, you know, dead. Rip. They're just all Primaris. And it's even though the Primaris Marines are meant to be pretty much immune to mutation and genesy flaws, Space Wolf no. Primaris are still... I said pretty much. In, in quotation marks. Yes, hence the term pretty much, not completely. But they still get the curse of the wolf, and even in them. Yeah, same with the Blood Angels and the Red Thirst. That was never actually confirmed. It's highly suspected. Highly suspected, but never confirmed. Space Wolves flat out stated saying, hey, these Primaris turned to wolf in the middle of a fight. So question, oh, do they maintain the culture of the original, like, chapter? Like, because I've heard about We don't really both. know much about them, to my knowledge. Like, we know that the Primaris Space Wolves have pretty much been integrated in as far as the Space Wolves will let them. Um, so I'm assuming the Wolf Spear, considering, like, Russ was kind of a, well, the ways of Russ are very much hard-coded into the Space Wolves. You won't get it out of their system in one chapter. Yeah. Next question. Uh, do, 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 do. Uh, do you honestly believe Magnus did nothing wrong? And if so, why? Those that believe he was completely manipulated by Zinch seem to suggest he had no free will. Um, he did everything wrong. He did it with the best intentions, but he still did something wrong. Yeah, he did nothing wrong on purpose. Like, his heart was he, in the right place, but he was arrogant as hell. Basically, yeah. it was, don't fuck up. Boy, this looks hard. <laughs> don't worry, I'm gonna not do it by doing everything you told me not to do, because I'm trying to help. Yeah, I always did the case, like, when people say Magnus did nothing wrong, like, he, didn't, he did nothing wrong deliberately, but he screwed up massively, so... There's yeah. a reason there's a saying, you know, going, the road to hell is paved with good intentions. Yeah. Yes, there is, actually, now you say it. Now, Drake and Vangerich, on the other hand... Oh, God, that guy was nuts. But he did nothing wrong. <laughs> well, yeah, it's another case of best of intentions. Like, the Senatorum were being useless for ages, and he put up with them for ages... And then he snapped and killed a lot of them. And no, he, no, he, he didn't snap yet. He killed them all before he snapped. He's just like, they're all fucking useless. Oh, I've been put in charge. Great, I've got an excuse to kill them now. Right, I can actually get everything working properly. He wasn't and even on the council. He was appointed by um, by Corland, who was the uh, who was appointed as Lord Commander of the Imperium at the time, as the Lord Gilliman. Um, I think by the time that he turned, it was Thane. Oh, yes, it was uh, Thane. Sorry, yes, my bad. Yeah, so like, Thane became Lord Commander, naffed off uh, with the Imperial Fist, and Vangrich wasn't Le on the High left, Twelve. No, he left Vangrich in charge, though. Yeah, he sort of was with them, but not on the High Twelve. Uh, he was sort of alongside them, sort of kind of like a Lord Commander position, and they were just. No, being I'm pretty so sure he wasn't. A, no, he wasn't a High Twelve at that point. I could have sworn that he wasn't. No, he, he was he, always there. I swear he was. Yeah, because the Ecclesiarch was taken off, but he was kicked off the council because um, Corlin shot him in the face. For converting to warpdom. Yeah. And it's like, well, we need, a new t we need number 12 there. Uh, Fangridge, yeah, you'll do. Now, let me just remind myself, because I'd, I've been looking into the Senatorum, so I'm going to actually just remind myself, if I can, about... I'm pretty it. sure that's how it ha happened, anyway. Uh, let me remind myself. Uh, Senatorum... Yeah, yeah that'll do. anyway, sorry, just give me a minute. Because I, I, I know somewhere there's a list of like various High Lord Councils throughout history, and I'm trying to remember exactly what it was at the time of the beheading. Uh, it says, yeah, the, exactly please... after Mesring died, he was appointed. He regained his seat on the High Twelve. Ah, yeah, he lost his seat to the Ecclesiarch. Then the Ecclesiarch died, and he got his seat back. That was it. Yes, the Ecclesiarch had an unfortunate accident where he accidentally fell onto a bolt shell face first. <laughs> I mean, after proclaiming that the beast was right and we should all welcome our new orcish overlords. 
He was basically Kent Brockman for The Simpsons saying, I, for one, welcome our new alien overlords. <laughs> Blam! God, making a Simpsons reference in 2019. Does anyone need to actually watch The Simpsons? No, but people still <laughs> reference it. It is one of the most referenceable programs I think there's ever been. It's just been around for so long. I mean, it's bound to be something that's referenceable. I know, I, I remember watching season one on TV when it came out. I'm that old. I remember Simpsons Mania of the early 90s. I was a And small people child. are probably asking, just how bloody old are you? <laughs> <laughs> so I'm old enough to have started in second edition. That's all you need to know. I mean, you're a dinosaur, literally. You're wearing a dinosaur mask. Duh. Well, there you go, yeah. There's your answer. Um, okay, let's have... <sighs> oh, no. Was that, was that an Ian Watson question? No, I was thinking about doing something meme-worthy, but then thought better of it. It's episode 69. You have to do something meme-worthy. All right, fine. One meme. Why does the Imperium use anvils as a weapon and drop them on their enemies? Is that even because a not because Wily e. Coyote wasn't a war master of the Imperium. Yeah, Inqu Inquisitor cannot do exterminators. Drop giant anvil on planet. I don't think it works that way. No, it doesn't. That's why it's a meme question, and I was so hesitant see, about reading. See, it. obviously, the real answer is you get like a really, really big ironing board, and you just like iron the planet with they the board. They just the world with with rakes, so they just step on them and smack them in the faces, <laughs> and they just start out, you know. Just need to so make there a. There's enough threats neutralized. They're just busy smacking each other in the face with rakes. We just need a giant piano. And they make sure to paint doors next to every door so that only certain people can get through them. Oh gosh, people! Only people that that pass a certain like IQ threshold can get anywhere. <laughs> it was. Yeah, I don't understand that often. It was Roadrunner, wasn't it, with Wiley Coyote with like, the painted tunnels and all that nonsense. Though, so speaking of memes, and this is relevant, um, fun fact, Inquisitor Chevak is infected with a meme virus. That's literally what it's called. Yeah, memetic. I, I know, oh. but it's still funny. It's like the meme virus. So he's got this mental image of an Inquisitor coming up saying, Oh Lord, they're coming here, chunky boy! <laughs> Yeet! No. If he's, like, infected with memes, he has to say, like, 28 memes. So I can have cheeseburger. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, past that point. No, I think that, that was pretty much that, or, like, the... And his facial expressions can taunt things like troll face and stuff like that. <laughs> like a boss. That just made me hurt inside. <laughs> just uttering that caused me physical pain. Though fun fact, that does mean that Ferris Manus is success kid, because, you know, he's eating the sand. Oh, gosh. You he did, can fact no, he's he can, eating a sandwich! Can... Come on, Remy! <laughs> I was going to say, you can thank Nost for that mental image, because she was the one who pointed that out. <laughs> <laughs> no. Yes. Mm. Back when I pointed out that passage and everyone was like, the fuck? <laughs> I just want to point out in, in, the, in, in lore edition, say, like, hey, Ferris Manus ate sand. Don't add context. That's funny. Then add the context. That makes it even funnier. 40k is just a gift that keeps on giving. Yes, it is. 99% of the time, yes, it is. <laughs> Sometimes it makes you just what? But... That too can be a gift, though. Depending on the what. Yeah, I can can imagine just like someone's doing a reading from like maybe like the ending of Wild Ride, and you just got someone else who's in a, in a video call with them. And like, so, and then they got to this Eldari complex in the middle of the Necron. To what? <laughs> and then they opened it and found the next. What? <laughs> and just like go on like that. And then Ian and Watson like, showed up. No. Boo! I throw my. It was, it was his fault. He was his private depository. That's oh, what God. happened. He, he is the, the fifth Chaos God. Oh, no. The Chaos God of Sex Goblins. 
I was gonna say, wait, is he the one that that you that shall not be named? It starts with an M, I think. No, that's Malal. Malal. Or Malice, depending on which you prefer. No, because Malice actually has dignity. <laughs> okay, if you want a different god, then let's have Nikoho, because that's definitely back in Sigmar now, has been mentioned twice. Are you saying that yes. you want Ian Watson in Age of Sigmar? No, Nikoho is the god of atheism. <laughs> oh. It, yes, it, I know. It's with it's so legitimate <laughs> gods walking around with mortals. It's like, hi, I'm Sigmar, I'm a god. It's like, I don't believe you. You're not a god. You're just some man in sparkly golden tights. Well, there was actually a story in this in that collection of shorts where Sigmar and Alariel have a chat about this bloke who built them their mirror, and this bloke was so he wanted to find the end of the, one of his one of the mortal realms. So he just went up a tower, had a chat with Teclis, yes, that Teclis, who is now a god. Then decided to go looking for Grimnir. Then ran into what I think was Grom Brindal, who gave him a key to a gate. Then he died, had a chat with Nagash before he fully died so that he could get him to kill the dog guarding the gate that he had the key for so he get through the thing. So he got through there and then was tempted by a demon of Zinch so that he could have all the power and all the immortality. So I was like, no, this is a bad thing. I need to tell all the gods about chaos, ran back to the mortal realms, and then that's why the gods have a mirror they can see across the realms in the Pantheon of Order. Yes, that happened. And now I've gone cross-eyed. <laughs> 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 So yeah, that, that that happened. There was a bloke from the realm of life who had a chat and was well known to Teclis and Nagash and then ran into possibly Grom Brindal, or though it could have been Grungnir, I guess. Oh, please <laughs> tell me it's, that it's Johan who keeps popping up in the Hammer Hell f- f- like Herald or whatever it is. Afraid it is not Johan. No. Uh, this that is was a bloke. missed opportunity. This... They should have made it Johan. This, is a... this bloke's from the Age of Myth. Johan's in the Role models comics from the set in the Age of Sigmar. It's two realm like, ages later. Unfortunately. It should have been Johan regardless. If, if Johan had the ability to use five of the eight laws of magic, that would be impressive. But you're well, he's, a, t- he's a magical savant. You're literally talking about people going, a person going to other realms and talking to every single god in that universe, and you're telling me that that person couldn't live longer. Like like age length is the is the oh no we can't go that far here. Oh to be fair though it took him six years I think to get from the tower where he talked to Ke- to Tyrion in Teclis in Gyron to then wander over to Sharmon to find Grungni and then he w- went off to Realm's End and his soul went to Shaiish when he died he didn't he kept his soul anchored to his body through death magic so he could chat to Nagash and then he went back again. So, I'm going to be perfectly yeah. honest with you. The only two names I know that you mentioned there was Sigmar and Nagash, and the rest were names. Just just names. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Teclis was the super-powered high elf wizard, who is now a god. His brother is Tyrion, last of the Venerians line, who is now also a god. And they're related to, it's very loosely to Malekith, who is now Malerian, who is now a and god. A dragon. Of shadow. And a dragon. Um... Uh, and they're loosely related to Ilariel, who was sort of Tyrion's consort. Uh, she was the, the queen of the Wood Elves, and she's now a god. Uh, Grungni was like one of the ancestor gods of the dwarves, as was Grimnir. He's now borderline dead. Grimnir is actually dead. Huh. Uh, and they all formed the Pantheon of Order, along with Nagash. Yes, Nagash was on the good guys team for a bit. And so was Gorkamorka, because they decided to make Gorkamorka into one god for a bit. That sounded about as convoluted as most Marvel comics. <laughs> that's the end times trying to get... That's, that's the problem with trying to bring a universe into a new universe. You have to relink everything back together again and it gets very, very messy. Yeah, yeah, I, I, can, say, I can agree with that. Yeah. I was just going to... Yeah. Aenarian is kind of the Stan Lee because he's just like... He is the father of Malekith, and he's the like, direct lineage down to Tyrion and Teclis, one of whom was probably sleeping with Ilariel. So, yeah. And Arian's got a lot to I was just going to make a comment saying, you thought it was Johan doing this, but it turns out it was actually Caldor Drago. <laughs> no, please. Because he, can- he, he did canonically see the AOS universe. That's so silly. It's also Ken that he saw it, so... And there's also Skaven. 
Yes. Hey, I love <laughs> my knows, ratty boys. Everyone knows that rat men don't exist, Michael. It's just a myth. God. Glares into camera. <laughs> How dare you not acknowledge my existence? I mean, to be fair, the Skaven in New Skaven are very, very interesting. I've got their battle tome, their, their codex equivalent, and it is interesting. I won't go into it, but it's an interesting read, if you really care. I love my ratty boys. Though, of course, I'm only... I'm in Blood Bowl. They're in Underworld if you need something to jump off into that game as well. Hmm. Are there any other questions? Do we have to? Um, have to there's a few, but we have time have, for any more. We have pretty much run to two hours at this point, I think. Um, okay. Let's see, is there anything particularly pressing? Um, that's an Iniad uh, AOS joke. That's. Uh, never mind. And. What happens if you put the butcher's nails on Magnus the Red? Does he blow up half the gal? Really? Probably. But, yeah, that'll but do. Remy, but pre -de pre demon Magnus, probably. <laughs> but but Remy, did are you going to accept White's proposal to go on a date? No, I'm not. <laughs> I I have standards. <laughs> <Ooh>. <laughs> And on that bombshell. Yes. So thank you very much, everyone, for, for tuning in to listen to this episode of the Meme-tastic Ian Watson Appreciation Podcast. Um, and thank you very much to Adeptus Adamaris, a.k.a. Scrafflers, for joining us this episode. Glad to be here. Thank you for having me. Yeah, it was me. a pleasure to have you. Yeah. So until next time, this has been Remlays from 40K Theories. This has been Tatsuki Imperialis. And I am a scrapper. <laughs> and we'll see you all again next time. Bye-bye. <laughs>